songs of praise this, this afternoon is just a time to gather and have some some enjoyment some some reminiscing uh, songs of the past but we're hoping that it's not just entertainment that in singing these songs because they're only they remind us of things that we've all shared in the past I don't know about you but when you sing a song that meant something in the past sometimes the memories come back and it's, it's one of those things it's like a journey so this is like uh, going down a journey that um, we've all walked on in the past so welcome to this time. I want to commit us to the Lord in prayer, just to say, God, we're here with you as well. You are the author and finisher of our faith. You are the beginning and the end. You are the one that we glorify and honor in all things. So, Father, we thank you that we can gather and sing songs, hymns, some of them are years old, centuries. They've survived. They're here with us and we, we carry them in our hearts because the words still mean something. They convey a revelation of you, your character, what it means to walk with you, what it means to have faith in you. And Father, I pray that each of us will be inspired in our walk with you this afternoon as we reminisce, as we hear items, as we uh, share things together this afternoon. We pray it'll all glorify you and inspire us in Jesus' name. Amen.
I have a confession to make. My hearing has just deteriorated this last week, so I believe you were singing really well. <laughs> uh, I just have to believe that, so thank you. Crown it with many crowns. If you'd like to sit down, you can, although this is not a good one to sit down on. Maybe we'll sit down in the next bracket, so it's hard to sit down and sing Crown him, isn't it? Sunbury Corral now, and with a couple of items. Again, thank you to Gwen Hutchison and all of the team for it. selected two songs for this afternoon. The first one is How Can I Keep From Singing and Why Wouldn't We Do That Today? 
And the second one is called The Light of God's Love, and I'm sure you will recognise the little tune that gets mixed in in the middle. But first we've got How Can I Keep From Singing.
Charles Wesley was probably the most, uh, uh, in a sense, the wiser of the two brothers. John Wesley preached, and everyone's kind of forgotten his sermons. And Charles Wesley wrote hymns, and everyone keeps singing them. So you know how it goes. And can it be that I should gain an interest in the Savior's blood?
Christ has done for us, we can uh, have a blessed assurance that salvation is ours, that we can inherit not only in the future, but here and now. Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. Auctioneer thought it scarcely worth his while to waste much time on the old violin, but he held it up with a smile. What am I bid, good folks? he cried. Who'll start the bidding for me? One dollar! One dollar! Do I hear two? Two dollars! Who makes it three? Three dollars once, three dollars twice, going, going for three, but no. From the room far back, a grey-haired man came forward and picked up the bow. Then, wiping the dust from the old violin and tightening up the strings, he played a melody pure and sweet as a caroling angel sings. The music ceased and the auctioneer with a voice that was quiet and low said, what now am I bid for this old violin as he held it aloft with its bow? One thousand, one thousand, do I hear two? Two thousand, do I hear three? Three thousand, once. Three thousand, twice. Going and gone 
said he. The people cheered, but some of them cried, we just don't understand what changed its worth. Swift came the reply, the touch of a master's hand. And many a man with life out of tune, all battered and scarred with sin, is auctioned cheap to a thoughtless crowd, much like that old violin. A mess of pottage, a glass of wine, a game, and he travels on. He is going once, he is going twice, he is going and almost gone, but the master comes and the foolish crowd can never quite understand the worth of a soul and the change that is wrought by the touch of the master's hand. Salvation Army background. Yeah, you'll love this one. I'm a Christian soldier. <laughs> you don't have to march around if you don't want. You can clap, you can go wild, you can stand up, sing. Actually, if you want to stand up for this, you can, just to stretch your legs. But uh, feel free to sit or stand as you feel.
It's hard to know whether we're going to march or stand, but we're going to stand on the promises. But you can sit if you like, okay? And be seated if you want to. Standing on the promises of Christ my King. sit on the premises. <laughs> Study it on 
it's such beautiful playing and just leads us, doesn't it, to kind of meditate on the presence of the Lord and His glory. We're going to sing another couple of songs. I know who I have believed and what a friend we have. must have discovered that secret that you can waste a lot of time and energy if you don't pray that you can uh, do it hard and uh, carry all the burdens yourself and you can come to the Lord and bring your burdens to Him what a privilege to carry everything to God in prayer
say you remember the things that bring joy or deep sadness everything else gets forgotten somehow so there's an emotion attached to certain memories and uh, we didn't sing this song either but I want to share it with you because it is for the reason I'm just talking about one of my lifetime favorite songs on a hill far away stood an old rugged cross the emblem of suffering and shame and I love that old cross with the dearest and the best for a world of lost sinners was slain. So I'll cherish the old rugged cross till my trophies at last I lay down. I'll cling to the old rugged cross and exchange it someday for a crown. To the old rugged cross I will ever be true. Its shame and reproach gladly bear. Then he'll call me someday to my home far away where his glory forever I'll share. And I'll cherish the old rugged cross till my trophies at last I lay down. I will cling to the old rugged cross and exchange it someday for a crown. I will cling to the old rugged cross and exchange it someday for a crown. When I was 12 years old and I was living in Ethiopia, my parents were missionaries and I had grown up in a Christian home, a Christian school. We memorized scripture every day. We went to devotions early in the morning. We went, scripture class was the first class at school. And we ended the day with devotions, and that was an ordinary day. Sunday was special, and we really got into the Bible on Sundays. So I kind of had this feeling like, you know, me and Jesus were like, you know, we were so close you couldn't, you know, separate us. In fact, my dad said to me when I was going to school, and I was only five at the time, he said, he said, Paul, when you get to school, don't worry, because Jesus will be your friend. I remember kneeling down beside the bed in our home, way up in the country, down country, Ethiopia, and praying that Jesus would be my friend to go to school. And of course, that was very comforting. I, I did wonder when I got to school what mum and dad were doing without Jesus, but uh, <laughs> it wasn't my problem. Dad said I could have him, so I did. But when I got to 12, I was attending a chapel service. It was a service in the headquarters of Sudan Interior Mission, which my parents were working with. And there was a man called John Ankerberg. And it's so funny how you remember things like, I've forgotten lots of things. If Dawn tells me to buy something down the street, I can't remember it, you know, like it's... Uh, or ask me, I shouldn't say tell. Uh, but I remember John Ankerberg with a room full of people like this, the packed out chapel. And he started to talk, just talk about the Lord and about the cross. And, and he had these chalks and he was, he was painting this picture with his chalks. And it was some Hawaiian scene with palms and beach or something like that. And then he did something amazing. He turned all the lights off in the house and just had an ultraviolet light over the over the easel and right in the middle of his picture that we hadn't seen before was a cross 
And then he began to talk about the cross and the, and the impact of the cross and why Jesus had died. And I, I think it was the first time I had a revelation that Paul Craig wasn't as sinless as he thought. That he wasn't as uh, unneeding of Christ dying on the cross as I thought. In fact, it, it brought me to tears and I came forward that night and said, Jesus, I want you to be my Lord and Saviour. The old rugged cross has been special ever since. And, it, and it, I can't sing that song without it evoking evoking that memory and, and calling forth that covenant commitment of the 12-year-old boy because it changed my life. I knew the next day that something different had happened. I, I couldn't explain it. I'll tell you what, how I know, because at boarding school, we all had slingshots. Illegal as they were, we had slingshots. We made them, and we were good with them. One of, the, one of our delicacies was to shoot pigeons and doves and then roast them on an open fire down in the forest, away from the supervision of the staff. It was a supplement to our diet, that's what we said, but anyway. I'm sitting up this tree the next day, and as I'm sitting there, this beautiful dove came and landed on the end of the branch, only a metre away from me. I didn't even think about a slingshot. I was, I was enraptured with the beauty of this bird, and I wondered how I could ever have shot it and killed such a beautiful creature. And that might sound simple to you, but as a 12-year-old boy, that was a big difference for me. It was kind of a, wow, there's a world view difference here. Something's happened to me. I felt different. Now, of course, there's struggles and there's things that happen in your life and you grow, but I cannot sing in a group like this, the old rugged cross, without it deeply moving me. And I know that the cross has a place in my life. Now, I'm only saying this as an example because I think you've got favourites as well. I think you probably have songs and... You know, a shout to the Lord's another one that kind of impacted me at a time when God was showing me something that was very special. And, uh, even just recently we learned here, yet not I, but Christ lives in me. And it's just sort of one of those theme songs for the moment, something that's sort of current about what God's doing in my life. And songs are like that, aren't they? They capture us. They, they capture something in our hearts. And I, I think it's important for us to sort of realize that that's the same for the church. And can it be that I should gain an interest in the Savior's blood? Those sorts of songs are encapsulate the gospel of Jesus Christ. They, they sum up, you know, the, the revelation of God's love through Jesus. That God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son. And, uh, you know, I, I don't know what songs from this era will last to the next. Um, uh, I suppose in my lifetime, my, my parents and grandparents would, would have never imagined the avalanche of Christian music that's hit us in the last 30, 40 years. Absolute torrent of just... And I'm not saying it's bad, it's just overwhelming because for centuries we had the hymns and the hymn book and it was fixed. When we were in the, in the 60s in our youth group days and we started to bring guitars into the church, we thought there was going to be an almighty war break out. <laughs> we used to call it the battle of guitars and I've still got the scars. Because it was the, you know, it was the old organ, the, the pipe organ in our church and beautiful instrument as it was. The young people sort of want to do contemporary music, but music is powerful. Music is either used for good or for evil. It influences people. It, take, it, it takes them on a journey. It touches them deep in their emotions. And I'm sure that's one of the reasons why music's so important in the life of the church. But you can see it in the world as well. Um, I, remember, I remember a Christian rock uh, group singing, why, uh, why should we let the devil have all the good music? And I thought, well, if that's the good music, he can have it and we'll keep it. <laughs> I know I'm getting old when I say that. You can tell I'm aging, right? You can tell I'm sort of getting past the, you know, being as young as I thought I was. But it's true. There's something about that godly music, about God's music, that sort of touches the soul in a different way, peacefully, um, stirring us up onward, Christian soldiers, you know, to action. And uh, I think we just need to be thankful to God that we have the, a, a rich heritage. And this afternoon, we only just touched on, I think we were on about 10 hymns or something. I mean, there, there are hundreds out there. There are literally hundreds and thousands that come down, down through the ages. And my mum told me, my mum's 97 in, in August, and she said, Paul, I've already picked the hymns. I said, Mum, you better pick the person who's going to play them because <laughs> they've got to keep that skill alive till you die. Like, you, it's, you know, we, we might say we'll pick a hymn, but if no one knows how to play it by then, uh, it could be difficult. Um, I mean, most of her grandchildren, which are my children, are are uh, in a different era of music and different era of worshiping God. But I just share that little story with you about the old rugged cross to say to you, uh, don't, don't be ever ashamed to have a heart song that's yours. A heart song is one that you sing to the Lord that expresses your faith, that, 
that takes you to that place where you know that you know that this Jesus, this Christ, this Lord that we serve is yours and you have a relationship with him. If you have a heart song like that, uh, sing it every morning. I heard of a prisoner in Russia who had a heart song. Uh, he, would, he was in prison for his faith. And they tried to stop him sharing the gospel. He just started reading the Bible to his own children and the neighbors heard about it and they came in and he read it to them and some more neighbors came and he ended up with you know, 100 people in his house and by then the authorities got worried he was starting some movement and some conspiracy so they threw him in jail and tried to shut him up and all the time he was in jail he'd grab any piece of paper he could and he'd write down a verse of scripture he'd remember and he'd stick it up on the wall in his cell and, and the, the, the authorities had come in they'd strip it all down they'd give him a bit of a hiding for it and he'd do it again he'd do a piece of coal or a piece of charcoal and a piece of toilet paper or any scrap of paper he could get and put up there but every morning he would stand at the door of his cell and he would sing this heart song to, to full, you know, for everyone to hear. And of course, he's in this massive jail and all the other guys are yelling abuse at him and telling him to shut up and he would sing his heart song to the Lord. Well, the story goes, as, as he went on in the jail, the, the authorities got absolutely sick of him being so rebellious and they decided, as they were wont to do, and apparently didn't have much accountability, they're going to take him out and execute him. And so that as... As the word went through the prison that this guy was going to be taken out to the courtyard to be to the firing squad, the whole of the prison began to sing that guy's heart song. And they sang it so loud it reverberated apparently in the walls of the prison were reverberating with this song. The authorities got so they got so so scared of what might happen that they decided to release the man and let him go. He went home to his family. I just say that because if you have a heart song, sing it to your neighbours, sing it to your friends. Sing it to your family, certainly sing it to the Lord, because music can change things. I think that's enough for me, but just thank you for coming, and thank you for uh, the musicians, thank you especially Alicia and uh, uh, Emma, great to have you with us, and Corral for your, your contribution. Someone told me just before that you have a four month uh, recess now, we got on the last, we got on the peak of the season, that's great, thank you, thank you for coming. Um, uh, Russell, Paul, uh, Dawn, Carmen and Sharon, thank you for your music. And uh, Heather and Judy up the back, thank you for that. And Vicky's uh, just about to kick in with her contribution, which is afternoon tea. So uh, thank you, all of you, for coming. It's been great to have a bit of fellowship. I hope we can have some fellowship over afternoon tea. And uh, if you're from other churches, there's some folks from different churches, take our greetings and our love back to, to the churches that we might uh, continue to gather in ways that... Uh, celebrate the same God and Father that we worship. Father, we thank you so much for the joy of Christian music, of hymns and songs, spiritual songs that touch our hearts and have the potential to change the world. And we thank you, Father, for those who have penned words under the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, have written down things that just seem to come to them as they testify of it a song that came in a moment or adversity or was revealed to them. And Father, we thank you that that's just been part of our rich heritage. May we continue to pass on uh, what we have received to the next generation and the generations to come. And Father, I pray that they too will appreciate not just their own music, but the music of the years, the music of the centuries that uh, carries a song of a journey that we've been on with you. So we thank you and we praise you above all. We thank you that we can gather. We thank you that... You have gifted us with music and with uh, abilities that can uh, give us joy that we can share together, that we can glorify you. Uh, we ask your blessing on each home and each family here represented in Jesus' name. Amen. So maybe this can be like our prayer for, uh, for today and days ahead. Breathe on me, breath of God, fill me with life in you.
gracious to you. Lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace. Amen.